There's this groundbreaking study on oxalates that was able to do something no previous study could do. Block oxalate absorption with just one dose of a natural compound that is basically side effect free. Super interesting stuff for anyone dealing with oxalate issues and the downstream effects like kidney stones or joint pain. Let's break down what the researchers did, what this compound is and what it means for your oxalate protocol. Okay, so this is the study and if you aren't familiar with the topic, oxalate acid is a small compound that plants make as a defense chemical. It's especially common in beets and spinach, for example, and when it binds to minerals like calcium, magnesium, sodium, or potassium, it then forms oxalates. And in the body, oxalates can crystallize and settle in places like your kidneys, joints, bladder, or connective tissue. That's why the most common oxalate problem is kidney stones, which are often made of calcium oxalate crystals. But oxalates don't just come from food, our own body also makes them as a byproduct of our metabolism. So keep that in mind. Normally, your kidneys do most of the oxalate clearance and they filter them out through your urine. But your gut also plays a surprisingly important role and this is what this study built on. If you have the right bacteria in your intestines, especially a strain called oxalobacter, a large part of the axolot load from your food gets broken down and carried out through your stool before it can even reach the kidneys. Basically what oxalobacter does is that it eats oxalates in your gut because it uses them as its primary energy source. The more it eats, the less you will absorb into your body. On top of that, other studies have also shown that it also signals the cells of your intestine to secrete more oxalate back into your gut from the bloodstream, which then gives your kidneys a break. So it both blocks new absorption and also helps your body dump out excess oxalates. The good news is that most people develop a stable population of oxalobacter as children, but the bad news is that it's super easy to lose them later on. Just one dose of antibiotics could wipe out all of your oxalobacter and they often don't come back on their own. Also, if you were born by C-section, then chances are lower that you develop this strain in childhood. And on top of that, gut inflammation, low fiber diets, and other disruptions to your microbiome can also make it hard for oxalobacter to survive long term. Researchers have known this and tried to help people redevelop it in their gut for years. All their trials mostly used freeze-dried versions that were unstable, didn't survive the stomach acid, or fail to colonize in the gut. So even though the idea was very promising, the bacteria simply didn't reach the intestines alive or in high enough numbers to make a difference. And we really couldn't use it to help people deal with oxalate issues before. And that's why this new research is such a big deal. It finally cracked the problem to delivering a live active form of excelobacter that can survive and do its job. Here's what this study looked like. They recruited people with no oxalobacter in their gut so that they knew that they needed help and to see how much of a difference this new bacteria made. Then everyone went through different diet phases so the researchers could measure how much oxalates could be leaving their body under the same conditions. So first they ate a low oxalate high calcium diet for five days just to set the baseline for normal oxalate levels and then they switched to a high oxalate low calcium diet for another five days which forced the gut to absorb more oxalates. This stress test showed how much each person's oxalate levels rise when oxalate intake is increased. Once all those baseline measurements were done, the participants received just one single oral dose of live oxalobacter. They then repeated the same high oxalate, low calcium diet for another five days. Throughout all of this, they did stool samples and urine tests to see how many oxalates the participants were excreting before and after getting the oxalobacter supplement. They also did follow-ups months and even years later just to see if people still had the bacteria in their gut. And the results were pretty spectacular. Urinary oxalates went down by an average of about 14%, so less oxalates were absorbed into the bloodstream and reached the kidneys. At the same time, stool oxalate levels also dropped by about 54%, which shows that more oxalates were being broken down by the oxalobacter species in your gut. This is crazy stuff because even small drops in oxalates can lower your risk of kidney stones a lot. And it was just one dose. Also keep in mind that there were no side effects reported at all. Really the only downside 
was that those participants that got antibiotics later on were shown to lose the bacteria again, but even then, the researchers were often able to recolonize it afterwards. This then brings me to the takeaway of this study. What else can we learn from it, and what does it mean for you at home? First, the study proves that Oxalobacter really does what we've suspected all along. It eats oxalates in the gut and shifts a big part of the oxalate load away from the kidneys. That's huge for anyone who's ever struggled with calcium oxalate kidney stones or oxalate sensitivity. For the first time, we have real human data showing that simply restoring this one missing gut bacterium can really lower oxalates without any synthetic medication. The frustrating part is that you can't just walk into a pharmacy or order Oxalobacter online. The live strain that they used in the study isn't sold over the counter yet. It's still only available for research. Hopefully, this study pushes companies to develop a stable consumer-friendly version, but that will probably take time. But even without a ready-made Oxalobacter supplement, there is a lot that you can do with this knowledge. First, if you've had a lot of antibiotics in the past, then it's worth talking to your doctor about testing for Oxalobacter, especially if you're at risk of kidney stones or have already had them. If you still have Oxalobacter, then you will want to do everything in your power to keep it around. Here are the key things that will help. So first, avoid unnecessary antibiotics because broad-spectrum antibiotics are the biggest reason that people lose Oxalobacter. If you need them for a real infection, of course, take them as prescribed. But try to avoid them for minor issues that don't really require them. Next, feed it some oxalates because it needs them to survive. People who cut out all oxalate foods completely can lose it over time because it basically starves. So keeping some moderate oxalate foods in your diet, like small portions of spinach, beets, nuts, or sweet potatoes, helps maintain the colony. And then obviously also keep your overall gut environment healthy. So a fiber-rich diet with plenty of whole foods, as well as a stable, low-inflammation gut environment. Also, if you no longer have Oxalobacter, you should still prioritize gut health and gut bacteria because there are other strains that also metabolize oxalates that can be taken directly. The most important one would be Lactobacillus species and Bifidobacterium species, which can be found in normal probiotic supplements and are naturally found in fermented foods, especially dairy and vegetable ferments. For example, this study used a normal supplement and was able to reduce oxalates to a significant degree when using high enough doses. I have a bunch of videos on gut health that will be linked in the description together with my oxalate detox protocol that will help you if you suffer from more serious oxalate issues. It talks about the proper oxalate diet, but also how to improve your oxalate handling with things other than oxalobacter. There are a few key nutrients that everyone needs and that most people with oxalate issues are deficient in. The bottom line and what I want you to understand is that more and more research shows that just following an extreme low oxalate diet is usually not the answer. Instead, you need to rebuild your body's defense systems and natural pathways that support oxalate balance. Hopefully, we will get an oxalobacter supplement soon, but even without it, restoring gut health really seems to be a priority number one if you're affected. Before I wrap up this video, don't forget to check out the video description. Like I said before, it will have all the related videos and also more free resources and my programs. They will help you if you're looking for step-by-step -step systems on topics like diet planning, detox, chronic fatigue recovery, and other things that often go hand in hand with oxalate issues. For more info, just open the description. It will all be listed there.